I am going to speak about the 19th dynasty in Egypt, during 1292 BC to 1190 BC. Geographical setting. Egypt was divided into two lands. One part was called the Black Land, and the other part was called the Red Land. The Black Land was fertile land on the banks of the Nile. This part of, this part of Egypt was used for growing crops. It was the only land that was able to be farmed because the Nile would flood every year, and it would leave a rich layer of black silt. The Red Land was just plain desert that protected Egypt on two sides. These deserts would separate Egypt from neighboring countries who would invade. Nile is the largest river in the world and empties into two, into the Mediterranean Sea. The Nile is, all, is also allowed for, for trade up and down the river. Because the Nile fl flows from south to north, you don't need a lot of effort to go north. In addition to this, the winds would blow south, so by using a sailboat, they could also travel back, back from south to north easily. The Nile also provided a steady supply of water, which was a great gift to the ancient Egyptians. Outline of the political or social organization. Ancient Egypt is known by many by their pyramids, but you may not be aware that not only their physical pyramids, but the society and social structure was also organized as a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, there was gods such as Ra, Osiris, and Isis as well as the pharaohs who were thought to be, to be gods in, hum, in a human form. Under pharaohs were the government officials, who included the vizier, priests, and nobles. The vizier was the ch chief master of the pharaoh. He ensured taxes were collected and mastered a rare skill in Egypt. He could read and write. Only nobles could hold government posts, and they became wealthy from the tributes paid to the pharaohs. The priests would also get rich due to the donation given to the gods. Under the government official came the soldiers. Soldiers fought in the wars or supervised construction projects when there was no war. Then you had the middle class, who were the scribes and merchants and craftsmen. At the bottom of the social pyramid, you had farmers and slaves. It was not impossible to move up the social ladder. Boys who went to school learned how to read or write, could become scribes, and maybe eventually hold government positions. Significant historical event. The Battle of Kadesh. The Battle of Kadesh was fought between the Egyptians and the Hittites. It took place in 1274 on the edge of Orontis River and ended in 1258 when the very first peace treaty in history was made. They went to war over who would take over the land of Kadesh. The Hittites first owned it, but the Egyptian, Egyptians had victory and took over. The battle ended up being a huge battle which resulted into a very bloody war. The significance of this battle was because it, was, it created the very first peace treaty in history. Significant developments. Egyptian military. The Egyptian had the Egyptians had many effective weapons. The mace head was one of them. The mace head was created to cut heads off their enemies open. The technology that they used for the mace head was a phenomenon. They put a hole in the middle of the mace. Then they would put a rock and drop some water a few times, just enough to put a little crack. Then they would chip the crack away and would repeat it several times, and eventually there would be a hole which goes across the rock. It could crack hard objects very quickly, so a single hit could do enormous amounts of damage. The mace head was one of the most important weapons used against armies. Another very powerful and dangerous weapon discovered by the Egyptian was the penetrative axe. In the Cairo Museum, there is a three and a half thousand year old ceremonial axe. The expertise of the weapon made, of the weapon maker was so advanced that the axe is still sharp today. It is said that even today people will struggle to make such axes. When this axe was tested on an iron helmet, it went through the helmet and had the ability to fracture a skull. Ancient Egyptians also had a very powerful sword. The slashing power of their swords was so light that it made, a it made it a deadly weapon. This sword was called the Kopesh sword. It, it had a curved blade which made it even more efficient which made it even more efficient, efficient way when they were cutting their enemies. The Kopesh sword had almost every function because the curve because the curve is created so the thrusting point is direct line from the shoulder and it is also got a little hook so you can hit, hit the face more easily. Another development of, uh, of ancient Egypt was, the, was that they had the very first peace treaty in history. This treaty was signed between the Egyptian leader Ramses II and the Hittite king. 
King Hattusili III. The purpose of this treaty was to maintain peaceful relations between the two parties. It was a very diplomatic agreement from the Near East, and it's the oldest written treaty. The Central Focus The central focus of the Egyptian civilization was the preparation for the afterlife. It was this central focus which was the reason for the creation of pyramids, which acted as tombs of the pharaohs who, who were believed to be gods. Rating the Ancient Egyptian Civilization Centralized Government In ancient Egypt, they didn't have many government positions. It considered... It consisted of a pharaoh who everyone thought was God, and workers were just his assistant. Agriculture intensification. Agriculture was okay in ancient Egypt. They weren't big exporters. Their agriculture tools were not very advanced, like the, you, like you may have seen in other civilizations. Specialized occupations. In ancient Egypt, there weren't many specialized jobs. They had a few, but there weren't any middle class occupations. There were slaves and then merchants. Complex social structure. Social, social structure in ancient Egypt was well structured. However, it wasn't very complex compared to other civilizations. Merchants and trade. Ancient economy was based on trade, so, they're adv so they were quite advanced in that. Development in science and writing. The ancient Egyptians were very advanced in writing, as they were the first people to, to write. State religion or, or belief system. The religion was at all strong. It was one of the first religions, but still it was too but it was still not too strong to be compared with others. Why did the Egyptian civilization fall? The power of the pharaohs began to decline, which made the, which made people lose faith in the government, which allowed invaders to come in and it eventually crumbled. Biography of a famous citizen during that period. Ramses II was born around 1303 BC in ancient Egypt. His father was Seti I and his mother was Queen Tuya. Ramses II was named after his grandfather, Ramses I. Ramses II grew up in a royal palace, royal palace of Egypt and was, brought, and was brought up to be the leader of Egypt. Seti I became, the, became pharaoh when Ramses was only five years old. During that time, Ramses had an older brother who was prince in Egypt and was soon to become pharaoh. However, his brother died when Ramses was at the age of 14. Due to that, Ramses was to become a pharaoh, the pharaoh of Egypt. Once Ramses hit the age of 15, he was the prince of Egypt. He also got married to two main wives, Nefertari and Isit Nofret. Nefertari was, would rule by Ramses' side and would be powerful in her own rights. As a prince, Ramses joined his father in military and began leading battles on his own by the age of 22. When Ramses was 25 years old, his father passed away and he was crowned king of Egypt in 1279 BC. He was the third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty. During the time Ramses was king, he led the Egyptian army against several enemies, which included the Hittites, the Syrians, Libyans, and the Nubians. He grew the Egyptian empire and also secured its borders in case of attackers. One of the most fam famous battles during the time that Ramses II ruled was the Battle of Kadesh. Ramses II died at around the age of 90. He was, buried in, he was buried in the Valley of Kings, but his mummy was later moved to keep it hidden from thieves. Today, his mummy is found in the Egyptian Museum of Cairo. Architecture in Ancient Egypt Ramses was, was a man of many skills. He was a great military leader and an architectural genius, and made a long-lasting legacy. Ramses built many temples. Ramses was obsessed with immortalizing his image. Many pharaohs built monuments and temples. However, Ramses built twice as many. Some of the most known monuments that Ramses built include the Ramesium, Abu Simbel, and Pi Ramesses. Literature Egyptian literature was written in the Egyptian language, which was called hieroglyphs. Their li literature is known to the world's earliest literature. Hieroglyph is made up of two Greek words, hieros meaning holy and glyph meaning writing. Hieroglyphs uses small pictures which represent the sound of an object or an idea associated with the pro object. Hieroglyphs were the first found by a French captain known as Pierre Boutard. Religion Ancient Egyptians, Egyptians had their own rights with, with the pantheon of animal-headed gods, such as Osiris, Mat, Isis, Horus, Set, 
Amen, Ra, Thoth, etc. The pharaoh was usually the head of the religion. Religion guided every aspect of the Egyptian life. Egyptian religion was based on polytheism. Rights are roles of slaves. In ancient Egypt, 80% of the people were slaves or servants. People were able to become slaves, slaves even if they were even if they weren't able to pay their debts, and other people sold themselves into slavery because they didn't have the cash to pay for pay for a home, home or eat. Some slaves were better off be, being free men because, the, because food and shelter would be provided for them. Unlike the rest of the world, slaves weren't treated like we think. In ancient Egypt, slaves had some rights. For instance, young boys who were slaves didn't have to do the harsh jobs. They would take it easy on them and mistresses had to take care of them. Art. Ancient Egyptian art consists of painting, sculpture, and architecture. Ancient Egyptian art re reached a high level in painting and sculpture and was highly stylized and symbolic. Egyptian art was created using media ranging from drawings on py papyrus through the wood, stone, and paintings. Ancient Egyptian art displays a vivid representation of ancient Egypt Egyptian socioeconomic status and belief system. And that was the history of Egypt during the 19th dynasty.